At the dawn of the new millennium, the United Nations General Assembly unanimously endorsed a declaration binding all the nations of the world to a common purpose. The Millennium Declaration stated, we recognize we have a collective responsibility to uphold the principles of human dignity, equality, and equity at the global level. We have a duty to all the world's people, especially the most vulnerable, and in particular, the children of the world, to whom the future belongs. That duty is as strong today as it was then, which is why last summer I was honored when UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon named me to a high-level panel of leaders from politics and business, civil society, and academia to make recommendations for a post-2015 global development agenda. Our ambitious recommendations are the result of hundreds of public consultations. We met with leaders from civil society, with women, with young people, with people with disabilities, with activists, and with the private sector about their priorities for the world. I'm proud to think back on the dialogue the high-level panel engaged in over the last year with each other and with the broader global community. It was a conversation that built on the shared experience of the Millennium Development Goals, the most ambitious effort in human history to reduce extreme poverty. Since the Millennium Declaration, more than 600 million people have moved out of extreme poverty around the world. That's a tremendous achievement, and it was made possible in no small part by the Millennium Agenda. The Millennium Goals have fallen short in some areas, but we can take important lessons from the places where we fell short, as well as where we achieved ambitious goals. We know now that sustainable economic growth requires more than just increasing GDP. It requires shaping enduring and accountable systems and institutions that respect the rights of individuals and give them the tools they need to help lift themselves out of extreme poverty. It requires developing sustainable systems of production and consumption to manage our natural resources and safeguard our ecosystems. We know now that we must be deliberate in reaching historically marginalized populations, whether they're isolated because of geography, ethnicity, gender, discrimination, caste, religion, or conflict. We know now that we must react to global climate change with urgency and purpose, working to curb greenhouse gas emissions while also helping countries build resilience to climate and extreme weather shocks and environmental degradation. I'm pleased to say that these lessons are reflected in the report the high-level panel presented to the United Nations. Our plan for a post-2015 agenda seeks to end extreme poverty by 2030, building on the successes of the Millennium Development Goals. Our plan sets specific but achievable goals like ensuring that every person has a free and universal legal identity and providing universal access to roads, electricity, telecommunications, and finance. Our plan seeks to create good jobs and to see the equitable participation of young people, women, and the disabled in formal employment. I'm especially proud that the high-level panel's vision for a post-2015 agenda includes a top-line goal to empower women and girls and achieve gender equality. Countries that still systematically exclude women from public life limit themselves economically and socially. The report is the first chapter and not the final word in the post-2015 agenda. Over the months and years to come, the UN and U.S. government will continue to engage on these issues as more and more UN member states, organizations, and individuals make their voices heard. The high-level panel believes that the post-2015 agenda will succeed only if it is accompanied by a strong, accountable, global partnership between people, governments, international institutions, business, and philanthropy. The Millennium Goals taught us that we cannot hope to end extreme poverty, feed the world's hungry, or teach the world's children without fostering collaborative and productive partnerships between all sectors. It was an honor to serve on the high-level panel. Over the last year, I've seen the energy and commitment to justice of the world's youth, the passion of activists, and the strength and know-how of local leaders, men and women, young and old. With these many voices in conversation and these many hands working together, I'm confident that we can finalize a post-2015 agenda that sees the end of extreme poverty in our time and the strong beginnings of a more equitable, just, prosperous, and sustainable world. Thank you.